What's up my friends? Welcome back. I'm Harv. I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography. Have you ever wondered what the best way to film TV screens, monitors, that kind of thing is? Modern displays are so bright, contrasty and saturated that it can be really surprisingly difficult to do this well. But don't worry, Harv's got your back. I'll show you how I went from this to this. Let's do it. I now have a non-profit Patreon for this channel, the idea being that any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy equipment and then I give the gear away to you guys. So if you find this video helpful and you're into gear giveaways, do check it out. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. All the details are in the description box below. So here's what I started with. I placed the camera with very little care. And as you can see, the image of the TV screen is actually too bright. There's no balance between the room brightness and the screen brightness. It's just not that inspiring. It doesn't look that sharp. And the first thing I noticed is I can see reflections. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tilt the screen. You can also move the camera if that helps. And immediately I can see an improvement in contrast, but you can still see some items from the room that are being reflected. You can see this classy pink pillow and there's a stuffed toy that belongs to my daughter. So I'm gonna move those as well. And as you can probably tell, there's a window on camera left, so obviously I'm going to draw the curtains. And that's because I want to be able to control the light in our scene better. Speaking of lighting, I've now set up two lights, both with diffusion and facing away. I've actually got them pointing up, and what I wanted to do was increase the light level in the room, so we can have more of a balance between the room exposure and the brightness of the screen. Next, I've switched on the domestic light you can see on camera left. And I like to do this for a couple of reasons, mainly I quite like the light that you get from it, plus it gives more context of being in the room. The only thing is the colour temperature of my domestic light is definitely warmer than the lights I've got set up. So I'm going to correct that now and just make the video lights a little warmer. I've gone to around 3300 Kelvin just to give it that sort of warm white look. I want it to be sort of an inviting scene and I don't want there to be a really obvious difference in colour temperatures between the domestic light and my video lighting. I want it to blend a bit more. Next, I've stopped my lens down a little bit to around f3.5, f4, and this is mainly to have more depth of field, to increase the depth of field. I need to do that because the screen is on a bit of an angle, and I want more of it to be in focus, it'll just look more detailed. Our exposure was looking a little bright as well, so I have corrected for that. Next, I've switched to manual focus, and the reason I've done this is because Previously, it was on autofocus, and all of the time it was detecting my eye on the screen. And this, of course, is quite unpredictable. It creates little pulses in the focus, and I definitely don't want that. So I set the focus for dead center down the middle of the screen. That way I can have more in focus. Next, I'm going to do a custom white balance. And the reason for this is I don't want the camera seeing different colors on screen and reacting to it and changing the white balance. That could look really quite jarring. So I want the white balance to be constant and I'm using a grey card. I have done videos about how to set the custom white balance. It's something I do for almost everything I ever shoot. And there we go, I think that's had a positive impact on our colours. They look a little bit more accurate. To light this scene, I have used rather powerful lights. And a really good tip is if you don't quite have the power required to light an entire room and balance these super bright screens that you can get, you can always reduce the brightness of your display. And also don't forget, you can adjust the contrast. That can really help as well. For this example, I'm just gonna stick with the standard settings. It seems to be looking pretty good as it is. Next, and kind of just for fun, I wanted to see what would happen if I used a polarizing filter. And believe it or not, the video on the screen is playing right now. And then when I rotate the filter around, you can see the image will appear. Really, I just wondered if it would improve things like reflections and I can't see that it does. This was interesting, but I can't see any kind of benefit to this. So my advice, don't use polarizing filters when shooting screens. Finally, I put my camera on a slider and I just love motion in my video. So this is just a personal preference. I really like what this does. So yeah, slider, optional. I like it. And that's how I went from this pretty uninspiring, unbalanced, not very sharp looking image to this way more balanced, dare I say it, better looking and definitely more dynamic looking image. Anyway, now it's time to take everything we've learned in this video and grind it up to make a delicious espresso of tips. 
for you guys. To sum up, deal with reflections by either tilting your screen or moving your camera. Basically, fix it in camera and don't try and fix it in editing. Use lighting to bring the ambient light up and balance the screen and room lighting. I like to leave domestic lights on, of course this is a personal preference, but they do add nice light but also some context. I recommend always using manual white balance on your camera and never auto white balance. This way your colours stay constant regardless of what the image is doing on your TV. Bear in mind if you're using something like an iPhone, it's always in auto white balance unless you're using some sort of specialist app. I prefer to stop the lens down a little bit. A deeper depth of field is often useful for filming TVs so that everything looks sharp and nice. If you need to, you can adjust your TV's brightness. This is especially useful if maybe you don't have the power of lighting needed to balance the brightness of your screen with the lighting in your room. I definitely recommend using manual focus. Actually, I consider it essential because with things like face detect, it can get very unpredictable. I tried it with polarizing filters and whilst I quite like the result, I don't feel like it's necessary, so maybe it's worth experimenting, but Overall, I'd say don't worry about them. The movement side of things obviously is optional. Personally, I liked what this did to my footage, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. So there you go, I hope this helps to up your screen filming game, and um, I just hope you found this um, interesting and helpful. But of course, I want to hear from you. What did I miss? If you can think of anything else, any pearls of wisdom, let's load up the comment section. After all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. I've now made hundreds of videos about video and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.